Here in Thailand, the, uh, the, the social pressure to, uh, for people to, to age in a certain way is very powerful. Actually, in Asia, uh, I've noticed it mostly. When I first came here and in, in landed in Singapore 14 years ago, one of the things that was a little bit different, actually a lot different than, than I had experienced back in the West, was the desire on the part of older people to become old, especially women. Men too, but it seemed more prominent to me in the women at the time. And the women, maybe just because they demonstrated it physically uh, and, and it was visually prominent that I noticed it, they would change their hair. You know, the beautiful, long, silky look that many Asian women have with their hair. Uh, women, when they became middle-aged or older middle-aged, would cut it short and make it curly, give themselves these permanents, which were very much a, 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 a kind of a, a symbol, a mark of their, of their age. And as I remained in the country and began to understand it a little bit more, I began to get the feeling that not only was that a comfortable place for them to be, they looked forward to it. They actually you know, wanted to be the old aunties taking care of the grandchildren and having their kids go off to work and, and support them. You know, the men do this too. Like I said, maybe it seemed more prominent in women to me simply because of the hair. I don't know. But it's a very prominent thing here in Asia. Now, that's not so unusual. You know, most countries don't have a good social security system that takes care of its old people. So that responsibility falls to families. And it's strengthened families to a great degree uh, in the countries that I've lived in, especially here in Thailand. As you age, you know, your family takes care of you. Now, none of that is bad. It just isn't me. It's no great big reveal or social secret to say that the people that we, uh, that, that we are with, the, the social groups, our subcultures, influence who we are, how we behave, and our, our outcomes are all influenced by you know, the, uh, the, the people that we surround ourselves with. That's not new information or particularly surprising. But I guess I'm just a little bit lucky. I think it was maybe because of the way I, I grew up. I remember being a very young teenager, a boy basically, like 11, 12 years old, and coming to the conclusion that all of the institutions around us, the schools, uh, religions, the military, uh, the police, even family, failed to live up to their own standards, which was, a disturbing thing for me at the time, but it turned out to be a great advantage because it set me up to have kind of a skeptical view of, of organizations in general. Now, organizations, all of the ones I've mentioned even, all have value, and some of them are very, very good, some are better than others, and some of them suck. Whatever. You know, that's just part of life. It's the way things develop. And because I have this, this, this ability, this perspective, uh, this, this way of being where I can pull myself out of a social group that I'm in and look at it from more of a macro perspective, I don't do that 100%, but I am pretty good at it. And, and one of the advantages that, that gives me is I get to make a lot more uh, of my own decisions about how I want to behave, about setting my goals, and how I operate in the world, and, you know, and, and my results. You know, the kind of results that I, I produce for my, myself in the world. Now, that doesn't mean that I forsake organizations or, or, or social groups. No, no not at all. I'm, I think I'm a very sociable person. But I have an ability to, to assert my individual, individuality to my own advantage. I always have. And it's something that I intend to continue to do. At all stages of, of my life, of our lives, but I can only really speak of my own experience, at all stages of, of my life, there have been social pressures for me to behave in certain, certain ways. And often I capitulated. I think, you know, social norms are good and serve a purpose. 
And sometimes I rebelled and asserted my own individuality. Not only here in Asia, but anywhere I've lived, in all the countries I've lived, we all have our social norms. And the, the, the social categories that as we grow and as we age, we are expected to fit into to a certain degree. And if you don't fit into them, you consider it a little odd or a little crazy or sometimes even a criminal, depending on just how much individuality you're asserting. But getting older, I've found, the expectations, the social expectations that I have experienced as I've aged have been more powerful than any other. And that exists in its own special way here in Asia as well. But it comes from everywhere. I'm going to read a comment that I, I made a, a video that was pretty popular and I was talking about relationships. Oddly enough, the, uh, the, the, the uh, conclusion of that video is I'm not really all that concerned about romantic kind of relationships anymore. That part of my life is you know, biologically behind me. You know, it's, it's just not that important anymore. I'm still a loving individual and like people around me, but you know, r romance isn't, it, it isn't a thing anymore. And you know, so I don't know why this guy would say this, but maybe he didn't watch the whole video. But what he said is, he said, I should stop trying to justify your desperation to cling to your youth. Then he recommended surround yourself with loved ones and retire in peace. Well, that's not bad advice. It's kind of a nice thing to do. But what I'm getting from that comment is the, the you know, the expectation, the, the, the demand almost, that I get old the way other old people do. I'm not, not knocking the people that do get old in a, in a very, you know, traditional or expectational kind of way. You know, hey, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But I've worked very hard to stay fit, mentally active, you know, sharp and aware of who I am and what I want to do. And as long as I'm still physically and mentally capable of doing that, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to, I'm going to be setting goals and objectives and, and, and seeking to, to be an achiever in whatever way that looks for somebody in my age category. I'm not the only one. I'm very much inspired by the guy that I, I learned how to be a yoga teacher from, a guy named Bikram Chowdhury, who was a very controversial guy. He's not a perfect human being. But here is a, a picture of him from two weeks ago where he was doing a teacher training here in Thailand. The guy's 80 years old. You know, and there are other pictures that I have seen of him that I've looked at him and said, you know, if he can do it, I can do it. You know, he's six years older than me and he still looks fit and tight and sharp and he's working hard. He had, you know, something like a hundred people in his teacher training down near Phuket somewhere. Uh, you know, that's work. You know, it takes effort and organizational skills. And so he's still out there, you know, throwing punches, so to speak, metaphorically speaking. I also have a friend up in Chiang Mai, Bill, of uh, Unseen uh, Thailand Chiang Mai is the name of his YouTube channel and you and Bill is really an inspiration because he's had some serious physical problems over the last year year and a half he's 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 undergone some real challenges and had operations and and chemotherapy and all kinds of things that look to knock you on your ass and yesterday he was out on his bicycle and he did like 41 kilometers on his bicycle. He, he isn't giving up either. I think what the, what I have, what Bill may have in common with me is that he was a police officer back in the States. He's retired from that. He was a policeman, a sheriff, and a detective. And, you know, he has a, you know, a, a really good bullshit meter. So I guess he sees the same kind of influences that I do that, that, that you don't really have to pay attention to if you don't want to. And one of them is to sit around and surround yourself with loved ones and get old. I mean, I like the, you know, surround yourself with loved ones part. That's a good thing. But, you know, I'm, you know, I'm as old as I'm going to be. I mean, there's a, age is a biological reality, and I know I'm not going to live forever. But I'm, you know, I'm going to go out with a fight. And, you know, as long as I see people like Bill and Beekram and others who are out there kind of showing me that, you know, you can still achieve something meaningful and special if you just keep trying and putting one foot in front of the other, doing the work, it is work, you know, it's there available for you to do. I came here to the Sansep Canal to make this video because it's a little bit quiet, but I also wanted to kind of recreate a photograph that I had taken once 
um, on, a, on a cloudy day here by the canal. Uh, it, I, I caught a video of one of the boats going by, like, like this boat here, and I wanted to see if I could get a high quality photograph of, of that event. And uh, so yeah, if you're still with me, <laughs> thanks for watching. You know, it's, 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 thanks for watching an old guy rant about getting old <laughs> and, uh, but doing it his way and uh, so yeah see you soon